Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Wolfgang Peist. I am professor for building physics at Innsbruck University and scientific head of the Passive House Institute. I'm going to give a short introduction into development in passive housing in uh, the upcoming years. Uh, so first, a information about the Passive House Institute. The Passive House Institute is a small independent institution which is working in research and development on energy flow in buildings, on simulation of buildings, on indoor air quality, and in all fields of development of energy efficient components. We have been working on tools like the Passive House design package, handbooks, uh, and the Passivpedia. We are working on quality assurance in a building certification. Uh, we are working on quality assurance of a component uh, certification as well. And there is a educational activity uh, done by a Passive House Institute to, to go to the uh, certified Passive House uh, designer. Let's first look on the motivation. Uh, you all have seen that there has been a lot of trouble with energy in the past decades. And uh, the most obvious thing is that the price of energy has been rising significantly uh, in the past decades. So there is a big motivation uh, to look for alternatives to fossil fuels uh, in this area. And there are alternatives. And the basic idea behind all that is uh, to look what are the specific services we really want to gain from using energy. And let's look on a simple thing like keeping coffee warm, which uh, we normally do by compensating for the losses, for the heat losses of the coffee uh, bottle by heating the coffee with external energy. And the basic idea is just to have the energy service provided by efficiency. And you all know how to do that. This is just a well-insulated cap. It's a vacuum uh, bottle uh, so that you don't need any energy to keep the coffee warm. And now the interesting thing uh, when looking on the use of energy worldwide is that almost everything we are doing with energy is of the same kind like in the example given. So we have about 30 to 40 percent of all the energy worldwide used for heating buildings. And so the very first uh, passive house which has been built in 1991 uh, demonstrated that it's possible to construct buildings in a way that they don't need a lot of energy for heating, but they just keep warm by intelligent uh, methods of the building envelope and of the technology used uh, to recover heat from the ventilation system. And uh, that is tried and tested. So it's just 20 years uh, that we have the monitoring results of that very first passive house which has been built in Darmstadt and we see that the overall energy consumption uh, for this building was reduced by some 90% compared with the average consumption we have in the same region for the energy services. So this is really working. And it's not just a simple family home, it's a row of houses which have all the same kind of efficiency. Now, this improving of efficiency is not just limited uh, to buildings. Uh, we can see the same type of development in a lot of different fields of energy use. So, for example, the development with the LCD monitors. You see, a standard monitor still has a consumption of some 50 watts, but you can already get on the market monitors which only have uh, 22 uh, watts for the same service. And the development uh, on research is uh, to use electronic ink displays. Uh, the electronic ink uh, doesn't use uh, any energy uh, at all for uh, displaying, so you can have a, a significantly reduced energy consumption uh, for the uh, display, for example, of your uh, computer. And this becomes very crucial if we come to cooling climates, where all energy we produce inside of a building has to be cooled outside of the building as well. 
So let's have a look on uh, what are the crucial elements in order to reduce the overall amount of energy you need for keeping buildings comfortable. I just want to show that on this example, this is a multi-family passive house which has been built by architect Enno Schneider in the year 2000. And we can see what the main elements are which have been used to reduce this need uh, for energy. A uh, very uh, first and crucial point in almost all climates all around the world is a very good insulation. Uh, but the insulation has only to be good uh, in the uh, undisturbed areas of the, uh, of the uh, building envelope, but also on the joints. The joints have to be free of thermal bridging. And we have developed methods of how uh, to realize this. We need a, a good quality of windows as well. Uh, the, window, the main function of a window is to, to deliver daylight and to, to be possible to look out of, of a window. Um, uh, so the windows can be developed in a way that they are uh, specifically useful in the climate we use it. And in a heating climate, it has to be very well insulated, but it still should have a, a good performance for solar energy delivery uh, into the room uh, behind it. The building has to be airtight. We don't want cold air to infiltrate, or in a hot and humid climate, we don't want hot and humid air to infiltrate into the building. And in order to have a very good indoor air quality, which is another very important goal for a good development of buildings, we use a ventilation with heat recovery. So this is the typical passive house, how it's used in a moderate heating climate. If we go to other climates, we'll see later uh, there might be other combinations of methods. Using uh, these measures, uh, there has been testing and monitoring of passive houses, uh, whole settlements, and uh, this is a comparison this shows uh, how high the consumption in an ordinary settlement uh, in, say, Central Europe is in the range of 70 kilowatt hours per square meter a year, compared to the measured consumption of the passive house settlements, where we come down to some 13 uh, kilowatt hours per square meter a year in measured consumption. So uh, the overall uh, energy consumption compared to average new construction is reduced by 80%. So these measures uh, I talked about, they are really working in practice. Uh, so uh, one type of work we are doing is to look for construction systems which are suitable to build passive houses. So we have looked for the overall insulation capabilities of these systems and also for reducing of thermal bridging and for reducing of uh, air uh, leakage uh, through the construction. And what you see here is uh, that all construction methods can still be used, whether it's a, a brick uh, layer a brickwork uh, building or if you use ICFs, insulated concrete frames, uh, the timber frame construction is possible to be used. Uh, there can be prefabricated elements which can be used for passive houses and a lot of different construction methods. So it's not a question of a construction method, it's only a question of the quality which is used for the elements itself. And the same uh, is true for the windows. So there has been a development of specific passive house suitable windows. Uh, in the region, uh, passive houses have been used, which are, uh, in this case, uh, triple uh, pane windows with a very low U-value. And uh, for uh, the moderate climates, uh, we also use a high uh, solar gain uh, coefficient, which might change in other types of uh, climates. Another thing which is really necessary to have is a ventilation system because we want to have really good indoor air quality in such types of uh, buildings. So there have been ventilation systems developed which have a very high heat recovery level. The heat recovery level of these elements are in the range of 80% and up to 90%. Uh, so uh, the overall heat loss is reduced by a factor 10. And if we have heat loads from the outside, uh, also the heat loads uh, can be reduced by the same type of technology. Now putting all that together, uh, we get the passive house. Here as an example of a one family house built now in another climate, that's a climate in the uh, United Kingdom, uh, built by architect Justin Berry, um, uh, showing that the reduction even in that climate can be in the range of 80 uh, to 90 percent, but it also can be built cost efficiently. And this is shown in the next slide. 
Uh, of course, if you, uh, if you uh, improve the quality of the building envelope, uh, the construction costs slightly rise. Uh, they rise uh, the lower uh, the consumption at the end should be. But on the other side, the consumption of energy, the cost for consumption of energy, uh, the present value of that, uh, is uh, reduced. So if we look at the sum of all costs, the life cycle cost, uh, you see that the life cycle cost has a third minimum. And the, the minimum is just in the range of the passive house development for uh, in, in this time. Uh, so we are the, the least cost development uh, which is possible uh, within energy efficient uh, building construction. But what is very important on uh, our position, uh, on our uh, point of view, is uh, that we provide a very good uh, indoor comfort, best comfort class possible, comfort class A accordingly uh, to ISO 7033, uh, which means that people feel comfortable in these buildings, uh, so there is no compromise to good indoor comfort uh, using passive house uh, technology. Now, the te passive house technology can also be used uh, for the refurbishment of existing buildings, which you see in an example here. In this example, uh, the overall consumption of the building was reduced by some 80% by using passive house technology to refurbish that building, uh, to add better insulation, to use a heat recovery ventilation, and uh, to use uh, better windows. And we have a quality assurance and certification process uh, which is working to ensure that that really works uh, with all the examples uh, which have been realized so far. Now we can use the passive house principle not only in uh, Central Europe, but we can also use it uh, all around the world. Uh, what, you hear, what you see here is uh, the heating demand and the insulation levels we have in heating climates, which of course is much higher in uh, the northern part of the world and which is uh, lower the farther, the farther we, you come uh, to the south. Uh, and this is uh, the sensible cooling part. So of course uh, there are uh, typical measures for reducing sensible uh, cooling loads uh, which, which uh, will be used in passive houses situated in cooling climates and the, uh, the efforts you have to take to use these measures uh, can be seen on this slide. And of course there is uh, another task, the task of dehumidification of indoor air, uh, which is uh, to be taken in uh, climates which have a very humid uh, outside climate. Now, uh, we are going uh, to provide knowledge about passive houses in internet uh, publications like the Passivpedia. In the Passivpedia, uh, you can find general information for the public about the passive house, and you get in the part two information and tools for the members of the International Passive House Association, the International Passive House Association, which has been founded by the Passive House Institute to give uh, worldwide information about the passive house standard. And there's also uh, in a, a passive house education uh, available, a 10-day training course for passive house design, a course for training the trainers. Uh, this has been implemented in some 20 countries so far, um, and it's uh, creating a very high transparency for the qualification of the people who learn that and uh, for the uh, certification. Mm -hmm.